into the world of art, we find ourselves in a special space. Gone the worries, the hustle and bustle of everyday life, there comes a strange silence and a feeling of contact with the most important things in yourself and with what is around us. I could add the color on the canvas, I could compose the canvas differently, but not a draftsman eye. And so, there is no such a task in front of me. I splash out feelings on the canvas, with liquid paint. How? I don't know. I am forgetting about the canvas. How it turns out, I don't understand. What would a canvas show? It's not my decision. He decides. Who leads my hand? I'm just wondering while seeing who and how to canvas coming from the different levels of the universe by the diversity of manifested moments I'm opening my soul for perception of eternal life and the highest revelations. In general, a creative space that you can imagine is an interesting and mostly mysterious space from the philosophical point of view. Why? Because you need to see the line that divides art in an ordinary sense and art of heaven, cosmic art. You need to be able to see the line dividing earth beauty displayed and the revealed beauty of the highest spheres. World's famous science fiction writer Ivan Yefremov used to say that there is a state of the razor blade, the subtlest state of the virtue on one side of which is our daily routine with its inherent beauty, and on the other side of this thinnest blade is a different beauty, the beauty that exists eternally, which refers to the concepts of nature's highest properties. My acquaintance with Igor Bulgakov happened because our common friend told that this man is a painter and a poet. The synthesis of arts since the 19th century was popular. Richard Wagner with his concept of his own Kunstwerk, total piece of art and Vasily Kandinsky, who talked about comprehensive harmony of the arts. But Igor Bulgakov still stands out a little, because his synthesis of arts is not far-fetched, but this happens intuitively, by the will of inspiration. No, uh... Igor has no special art education. He took up a brush quite unexpectedly. But this is good. He is not constrained by academic traditions and paints what he is told by his inner instincts. The artist is a man approaching to the canvas, to a blank, clean canvas, and he already knows what will be depicted, what kind of painting technique shall be used. He has already worked out the plot of the canvas bundling, I have a completely different mechanism. This is an automatic painting. This is when you put a blank sheet of paper in front of you, put a pencil on it, and have no idea what is going to be written by this pencil. Exactly the same mechanism is with the canvas. Igor Bulgakov depicts no pre-invented plot, but he displays and reproduces what already exists in the universe in eternity already existing images. While some of them are revealed completely, others are only partially. And again, when you access the paintings of Bulgakov, it is impossible to tell if this is a figurativism or an abstraction. Some paintings are more abstract, and some are purely substantive. In fact, Igor Bulgakov is not an artist, not a poet, but a conductor. He conducts from the high worlds to us, people living on this earth, people with a short life, something that exists eternally in a planetary and a universal scale. I call it a communicative art, because the communication is the exchange of thoughts and feelings between people. The artist expresses his thoughts, feelings, his perception of the world in the forms that he uses, in paints, and the viewer perceives it. The Japanese have a very interesting expression about looking at the picture showing the nature and thinking of your friend. So this is the edge. This is something that calls art. If I look at the picture which shows the nature and think of nature, this is not the art. This is not the task of art. 
To draw a picture by copying a photo is not a task of art as well. It's not the art. This is very important because the art and creativity itself does not work on simple perception. It works on double or even triple perception. In some countries there are artists who paint their paintings and accompany them with text. But unfortunately the semantic relation between text and paintings is very weak. Basically, those pictures are, well, how to say, with some kind of inscriptions. Well, I personally consider my works as they were painted by external energy. As for art critics, they still has not yet decided how to call them. The only analogy was found in ancient China, oddly enough. Artists applied text to the paintings or engraved there and it was so harmonic in terms of text merging and the painting content. To my opinion, it is so similar to the paintings of Igor Bulgakov. Each picture can be provided by numerous names, although the names themselves can express only some tiny part of this painting. And I think this is the good idea to give name to the painting as a whole verse or quatrain because of the steady flowing of thoughts in here. Probably there is a man and his inner world in the center of his work. Very often, among the crowd in the painting, the characters stand out single. Lonely girls who are shown in profile and go somewhere, anywhere. And his coloring is very unusual. The colors are amazing. From the pale flame of a candle to the fiery prominences to bursts and the sky from pale down to black, black night. There are multi-figuring paintings, and here I want to mention one of the paintings showing the round dance. People standing on a high mountain, and mountain is built of the Atlant's suffering figures. At the top, the titans supporting the vault of heaven, watching everything what is happening below. And every time when one looks at the picture again, some new character opens, echoing general group. Here is the face, and here we can see some objects, here are the verses, and some more. And it turns out to the consciousness of continuity. If this consciousness of continuity is allowed to be shown in pictures, so this is some sort of admission of Igor Bulgakov to high secrets. And we can say that this fringe is not allowed for everyone to cross beyond. But he crossed this line. Works of Igor Bulgakov are very autobiographical. And it all began with a painting called With the thinnest beam I'm going into space and there I'm free from problems. On this painting it unfolds a scroll and on the scroll are human faces imprinted. Remember the orthodox iconographic tradition when an angel is depicted turning the sky into a scroll. And really, if you look to the canvas as Bulgakov says, not to the paintings and canvases as he calls them, there are a lot of parallels in ancient Russian monumental art. In the West, there is a very tough division into spirit and matter. And the spirit in the West is the religion. And in the East, the spirit is quite something else, not a religion. It's the way of life, a lifestyle. This is the essence of life. That's the spirit. You know, many people are being confused by the concepts of religion and faith. I would say the following. There are many religions, but one source. The source is single ever since. And we live without seeing the hate. We live in delusion without raising our eyes. It's interesting to note that just a few days after our first meeting with Igor Bulgakov, he painted the canvas which shows a human figure of a romantic musician in the foreground holding a violin. And the image of the violinist in the fine arts was extremely common, especially in the era of the Silver Age. Because the violin is the instrument that can express the strongest human feelings, such as crying, laughing, 
suffering, along with his master, violinist. Those particular paintings can give a push for understanding of this world's globality and the role which should be taken by a man. So far, the one must be the universe that embodies almost the whole world. So only for a man with, let's say, a living soul, is easier to perceive these canvases and to fully understand them. Are we ready for the paintings of Igor Bulgakov? I believe that the paintings are ahead of their time and the fact that they will be shown on the public now is one more indicator that Igor himself is an experimenter. There are no commas and dots in his poems. So we can't see neither dots nor commas in his paintings as well. When wax was melted and the candlelight turned off by early morning, the candle burning inside of me shone as hundred times as bright.